Now the latest ITV News in London with Duncan Golastani. Tonight, stabbed to death in his constituency. Sir David Amos, the MP for South End West, died after being attacked during his MP's surgery this lunchtime. The Prime Minister has paid tribute to the man who's been a Conservative MP for 38 years. David was a man who believed passionately in this country and in its future. And we've, we've lost today a fine, public servant and a much-loved friend and colleague. This afternoon, a 25-year-old man was arrested. In Leon C this evening, there is shock and sadness from the people he served. If any people got a problem local, I said go to Sir David, he will help you. Uh, any time people go there, he give him so nice help and kind person. He loved people. Sir David Amos is the sixth MP killed since the war, raising questions again about the safety of our politicians. We'll discuss that with two who knew him well. Good evening. Sir David Amos was attacked and killed while seeing the people he has served as MP for decades. At a meeting with constituents in a church in Leon C this lunchtime, the Conservative MP was stabbed multiple times. Paramedics and an air ambulance crew tried to save his life, but the confirmation of his death came hours later. A 25-year-old has been arrested on suspicion of murder. In the last hour, the Prime Minister described him as a dedicated public servant, colleague, friend, husband and father. In this special programme, we'll be live at the scene where Sir David was attacked and we'll have the latest reaction from his colleagues in Westminster. First, though, Martin Stew has the latest on the death of Sir David. Belfair's Methodist Church in Leon C. Now a murder scene. Inside the hall this afternoon, South End West MP Sir David Amos had been holding his regular Friday constituency surgery. Around midday, it's alleged a man walked in and stabbed him multiple times. I got a phone call um, just after 12 and said, uh, David's been stabbed several times, you know, um, and where he was in uh, his surgery. It's absolutely horrendous, unbelievable. An air ambulance arrived, and for a while the area became a field hospital. Medics trying in vain to save his life, before police confirmed just before three the 69-year-old had died. David was a man who believed passionately in this country and in its future. And we've, we've lost today a fine public servant and a much-loved friend and colleague. And our thoughts are very much today with uh, his wife, uh, his children and, and his family. I'm absolutely devastated. We came into the house together in 1983. We've been friends ever since. We've worked together on so many projects together. He was the kindest, most decent of men. It's, it's absolutely frightful. I'm, I'm really checking out the situation. Sir David had been a Conservative MP since 1983. In recent months, he'd spoken about the need for stronger policing of violent crime. I raised the issue of night crime in the chamber earlier this month. I hope that Essex police recruit enough police officers to stop any more violent crime. In recent years, MPs have faced increasing levels of hostility, which have at times spilt over to violence. In 2010, East Ham MP Stephen Timms was stabbed. He tweeted today he was appalled by the news. And just five years ago, Jo Cox was murdered. Her sister, Kim Ledbetter, is now also an MP. Totally shocked by what's happened to think that something so horrific could happen again to another MP, to another family. Um, and scared and frightened. And it's really important that we get good people in public life. But this is the risk that we're all taking. You know, and, and so many MPs today will be scared by this. Flags at Downing Street have been lowered to half mast. While back in Leon C, flowers are being laid at the scene. Inside the cordon, a knife was recovered by officers on the scene 
who have arrested a 25-year-old man on suspicion of murder. They're not looking for anybody else. Martin Stew, ITV News. Sam Holder is outside the police cordon in Leon C now. Uh, Sam, what's happening there? Well, Duncan, you can see the road behind me is still closed off. In the distance is the church where Sir David was killed. And today we've seen lots of local people come down really to express their grief. Sir David became MP here in 1997. Before that, he was MP in Basildon. So he served the people of Essex for the past 40 years almost. And I spoke to one constituent earlier who was in tears. He said that for many people here, Sir David wasn't just an MP, he was also a friend. He was so nice to anyone. If I got any problem, yeah, I call at the Westminster office. He said he spoke to me and he helped me. If I send anybody, help me. If any people got a problem local, I said go to Sir David, he will help you. Uh, any time people go there, he give him so nice help and kind person. He loved people, loved doing his job. So David was due to go out for a celebratory meal with some of his colleagues tonight. He was a friend to many here. He was a husband. He was a father to five. One of his daughters recently got married. Another was due to have her wedding in December. His death is a truly awful moment for not just his family here, but his many friends as well. Sam, we'll come back to you later in the programme, but for now, thank you. We have, sadly, been here before. Sir David is the sixth MP to be murdered since the war. Most recently, Jo Cox was shot in her constituency in 2016, and every day MPs deal with abuse and threats online. Questions now turn to the safety of those elected to represent us. Our political correspondent Simon Harris is in Westminster for us now. Simon. Duncan, the Palace of Westminster has some of the best fortifications of any building in London and has done ever since the MP Airy Neve was murdered in a car bomb explosion as he drove from the underground car park in 1979. But the security measures MPs enjoy here don't extend to their constituencies, where every week they're expected to hold face-to-face -face meetings with their constituents. The vulnerability of constituency MPs was exposed in 2010 when Stephen Timms, the Labour MP for East Ham, was stabbed and badly hurt by a woman who attacked him in his weekly surgery in Beckton. This afternoon, the veteran Conservative, former MP for Eltham and now father of the House of Commons, Sir Peter Bottomley, had this to say. We know that in hospitals, in shops, in public transport, we're all at risk. But we're not that at risk that people won't come forward to do what we've been do trying to do. So whenever an MP is attacked, whether fatally or not, there are others prepared to come forward and fill the gap. And as long as that happens, I think our way of life will go on being put forward, promoted positively by people the way David has in his near 40 years of parliamentary and political public service. Sir David Amos described himself as a people person. He liked eye-to-eye -eye contact. He missed meeting his constituents during lockdown. Increasingly, though, MPs have become the target of abuse on social media and even death threats. And tonight, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, said questions were rightly being asked about the safety of our elected representatives. She's expected to make a, make a statement to the House of Commons next week. Simon, thank you. In Westminster, it was one of those rare days where party politics were forgotten. Tributes came from both sides of the Commons, from fellow Conservatives to opposition MPs, from the Prime Minister to the backbenchers who sat alongside Sir David. I'm joined now by two members of Parliament who worked alongside him for decades, the MP for Hendon, Matthew Offord, and Lord Pickles, who served as MP for Brentwood and Ongar until 2017. Uh, Matthew Offord, firstly, a desperately sad day for those like you who knew Sir David well. I'm truly heartbroken. Um, I've known David since I was elected and indeed before. And he was someone that well, I would claim to be a friend, but I know that many other people would make that claim as well. And he was also on the speaker's uh, panel of chairs. So he would uh, initiate debates and he would uh, referee between members of parliament, always being impartial to those on both sides of the house. So lots of people knew him, uh, he was friendly to lots of people, and he became greatly respected as a result. He was really a senior backbencher in that he didn't seek ministerial office,
but he worked with colleagues. He uh, not only worked on issues in his constituencies, such as Sikh and city status, but he also worked with some of us on issues that are important to our constituents, issues such as Cyprus, for example, Iran and, and Albania. Mm. And actually, David and I were one of the, two of the five members of parliament who were targeted in France in 2018 by the Iranian terrorists. So he had a range of interests across parliament, not just his own constituents, and that was greatly appreciated. Lord Pickles, if I can bring you in now, tell us about the man you knew. Well, it was everything that, that Matthew said. Uh, when I uh, left Bradford and moved down here, uh, David was one of the first people to greet me. He had lots of ideas about how to run the campaign. At the time, he was PPS to Michael Portilla, so he roped him in to offer me support. There was nothing in it for, 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 for him. He just did it out of sheer kindness. And um, he was very much proud of, um, of being a member of Parliament for South End. And he was quite a canny operator. He, um, he knew what the system could produce and he knew how to approach ministers. And most times he was very successful. But I think it's his ability to, to connect with people I mean, I suppose we're going to call, talk about security in a moment, but he was somebody that you could meet in shops, you could meet in restaurants, you could you could meet on the train going to South End. He was someone that, that was always about and always keen to meet his constituents. As Matthew just mentioned, why do you think he wasn't interested in ministerial office? That's quite rare, isn't it? It is. Um, he was rather good at, uh, at, um, at what he did. Uh, he was a very effective advocate for uh, for South London prior to that, um, uh, for uh, Basildon. There's always an element of serendipity about a minister's career anyway, but he was a force of nature that just would not give up. Um, you know, if you got something, uh, a letter from him as a minister, you always pay particular attention to it because it'd always be just pitched the right side of reasonable. And you knew if you didn't... Uh, um, uh, agree with it that you, David would come back and he would argue the point and um, most often he got his own way. Uh, Matthew, let me, let's be honest about constituency work. A lot of it is dealing with those in desperate times, exhausted and sometimes very, very angry at the institutions and the systems that they're dealing with. How vulnerable do you think MPs are? How vulnerable do you feel as an MP when you hold your surgery? Well, I think you only need to look at the fact that six people have been killed since the Second World War uh, while serving as a member of Parliament. And in addition to that, you mentioned Stephen Timms earlier in your report. And of course, there was Nigel Pennington um, back in 2000, whose constituency caseworker was actually killed at the time. I mentioned that David and I attended an event that was targeted by a terrorist. But on our day to day basis going around our constituency, there are some people, maybe they're constituents and maybe they're not who are seeking to do us harm, and they wish to do harm perhaps to Parliament and seek to strike a blow at the heart of democracy. And I feel that uh, as we are more and more um, putting uh, information on social media, people know where to encounter us in the future, and that can cause us great problems. But the problem is that we want to be in touch with our constituents. We want to hear the problems that they have and certainly be accessible. But in this day and age, it is becoming more and more difficult certainly as uh, people become extreme or on platforms such as social media and then take that into the real world. And we've seen in recent years and again today that uh, this results not only in injuries to members of parliament, but on occasion death. Matthew Offord and Lord Pickles, we really do appreciate you joining us on what must be a very difficult day. Thank you. Well, soon after Essex police arrived at Belfair's church, a 25-year-old man was arrested on suspicion of murder. Sergio Carrier is outside South End Police Station. Sergio, what more do we know? Duncan, in the next few minutes, the Chief Constable of Essex Police, BJ Harrington, will be holding a news conference where we are expecting more details about the circumstances of the attack on Sir David Amos. As you say, what we do know is that a 25-year-old man was arrested at the scene on suspicion of murder. He was taken into custody where he is right now and is being questioned. 
A knife was also found close by at the scene and we know that the police are not looking for any other suspects. But once again, we are looking tonight at the stabbing of another MP that has been going about their constituency business. Uh, and it raises the questions, as we've been hearing, about MP security and whether current measures are enough. Sedgil, thank you, and we'll keep across that press conference as it happens. As we came on air this evening, a mass began at St Peter's Church in Eastwood to remember the life of Sir David, um, who was as dedicated to the Catholic Church as he was to his constituents. Anna Geary is outside, outside that service now. Anna. Yes, um, as you say, Duncan, a Catholic Mass is taking place just behind me here. It started at about six o'clock. Now, there are about 50 people that have come together to attend this service. Now, it's being led by Father Jeffries, and he he said that David didn't actually frequent this particular church, but he was a man of profound Catholic faith, and that is why he wanted to do something within his congregation to pay his respects and offer up his prayers for the family. Now, this comes just six hours after that dreadful stabbing on the same road we're just half a mile away from where it happened. Another statement on the faith of David Amos comes from Stephen Cottrell, who described his particular concern for his Christian community. Now, many here today are united in wanting to pay their respects and offer up their prayers for a man who was so well loved in this area. Anna Geary in Eastwood, thank you. Let's return to South End and to our main story this evening, the death of the South End MP, David Amos. He was 69 and had been Member of Parliament for South End West since 1997. He was stabbed multiple times during his constituency surgery just after midday today. Sam Holder is at the scene with the chair of a homeless charity he was patron of, one of the many causes close to Sir David's heart, Sam. Duncan, that's right. Sir David Amos was renowned for his animal welfare work and following the Grenfell disaster, he helped support people stuck living in flats with unsafe cladding. He was also passionate about homelessness. I'm joined by Del Thomas from the charity Off the Streets. Can you tell me about the kind of work Sir David did to tackle homelessness in the area? Yeah, so David did an awful lot of work. He was a very uh, passionate supporter of our um, shelter. He used to come down regularly visit. He helped set out regular donators and um, he would regularly speak up in Parliament and also at the local council on behalf of the work that he did. And what was fascinating was, well not fascinating, but every time um, he didn't then publicise it. It wasn't for his good, it was to highlight the, ch the charity as a real community champion. I mean, you are a relatively small charity. What did his support mean? Well, it raised the, high, raised the profile and of homelessness here in South End, it's a huge issue and it meant that we've been able to overcome some of the barriers that we would otherwise have struggled as a grassroots charity. You knew him well, can you paint a picture of what he was like to work with, what he was like as a person? So he a very smiley person, he always um, would come down with a big smile on his face and he cared, he generally cared, you know, as I say, lots and lots of times he would send us emails and messages and if ever he'd get people uh, to come and just donate him. He asked questions uh, and he wanted to know more and he wanted to know what he could do to help improve the situation. I mean, this must be incredibly hard news for you as it is for many people here. Yeah, I it's mean, it's been a, a real shock um, and just so, so heartbreaking that, you know, he's just doing his job. He said goodbye to his wife and his kids this morning and that's it. And that's just awful, awful, devastating news. We've heard some of the charity work you did. In terms of homelessness, has it had a real effect here? And if so, what's it look like now in the yeah, area? Yeah, so back in 2018, South End was one of the highest in the country. It's the fact, according to government figures, it had the eighth highest um, rough sleepers, number of rough sleepers. And so the work that we've been able to do through off the streets, so we've housed um, 119 people in the two years that we've been going. 
Um, and David's work really helped to support that and to maintain that. And he's been a real, true champion for us. And you know, we're, we're all devastated by his loss. How big a loss will he be for the local area? Massive. As I say, he was, he was an MP that genuinely cared. He was an MP that would turn up community events, that would support, um, that was, he was a cheerleader. You know, in Parliament, he'd talk about South End. You know, the MPs knew about South End because David was, uh, you know. Del, thank you very much. A another sign of the massive impact Sir David has had on this area. Sam and your guest, thank you. Well, Sir David Amos had been a member of Parliament for 38 years. Representing his community was more important than gaining ministerial office. From the backbenches, he campaigned on the issues close to his heart, above all, the interests of South End. Outside of politics, he was a husband and a father of five children. Sir David Amos was a Conservative MP for 38 years. Born in Plasto, sticking to his Essex roots, he began his long political career in Basildon. In 1992, he retained his seat against all the odds in what was an election the Tories thought would end their hold on power. Socialism in Basildon and in Britain tonight has been defeated. Former Prime Minister David Cameron said he was the most committed MP you could ever hope to meet. From Basildon, Sir David went on to become MP for South End West, fiercely campaigning for the seaside town to become a city. I want to tell the country and the world that we are the best, and one way to do it is to raise our official status by becoming a city. Deputy Prime Minister and Justice Secretary Dominic Raab said he has been left heartbroken. He describes Sir David as a great common-sense politician and a formidable campaigner with a big heart. He had even stronger views about leaving the EU, a Brexiteer and Leave campaigner from the word go. My right honourable friend has committed our party to a referendum on our relationship with the European Union. Yeah. Given that my mother will be 101 next Thursday, yeah. she, she wondered if the referendum could be brought forward. <laughs> He was also a passionate animal rights campaigner, always striving to protect the welfare of animals. This is a big step forward from the government, detailing how they will improve animal welfare domestically and internationally. We should celebrate that. It is that relentless commitment to issues closest to his heart that fellow MP and Transport Secretary Grant Shapps paid tribute to. He said he was a dedicated, thoughtful man who lost his life while serving the constituents he worked so hard for. Tonight's candles have been lit, a flicker of light in a dark day for our democracy. Sir David Amos leaves behind his wife and five children.